It is good that you are here to record this picture of me in my palace garden at Addis Ababa. People who see this throughout the world will realize that even in the 20th century, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath. Order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order, can emerge. Now we can see a new world coming into view, a world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. The Council on Foreign Relations, known as the CFR, an organization publicly sworn to destroy American national sovereignty and usher in a tyrannical world police state, could not contain their glee on September 12th, the day after the tragic attack. They announced their new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think, only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. In their attempt to form a so-called new world order, remember, it took them about, it took them between um, about 50 or so years, if you, if you notice it, from 1941 to 1991. Because in 1991, September 11th, on Ethiopia's New Year Day, September 11th, 1941, George Herbert Bush, you understand? He basically announced the New World Order. You understand? He announced the New World Order. What is this New World Order? See, it took them about 50 years to reel from that blow. So it's like the King of Kings. What did the Bible say? That unless these days be shortened, none would be saved. And I'm the very elect. Unless he shortened these days. You understand? Because of the very elect. The very elect, you understand? might be destroyed you understand so these days had been shortened and that's what we're living right now in such a short space of time where it seems like everything is just going on 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 light speed you, you know i mean even faster than light but um yeah I just wanted to touch on that right there. yeah they haven't even become familiar with it i want them to get a chance to become familiar if they're interested they can go look you know, look things up for themselves, and then we can have a real dialogue, a real conversation, a real discussion. People can bring in evidence and facts that they know, we can bring evidence and facts to the table, and it can really grow, instead of everyone more or less just dependent on like, okay, well, this is my take on it. You know, I have my own take on it, but this is the evidence. It's in pro to identify, you know, saying the new world order. You understand? He pointed out the new world order. He warned, you understand, the world of the new world order. But like his warning, you understand, to the League of Nations, this warning also, unfortunately, has been avoided. But what's interesting is that the little bit of his teaching that has seeped out into the world, like through Bob Marley's um, um, Until the Philosophy, is picked up by everybody. You understand? Everybody uses this. You understand? It gives, it gives them inspiration against the powers that be. That very same speech and word sound of his imperial match that Bob Marley made into a song. That right there is is the inspiration for this present generation, but because they denied more of the teachings of his imperial majesty and they lied to about and his imperial majesty is slandered in their minds and their perception. 
You understand? You know, they they, they call him reforming. They they call him the diplomatic reforming monarch and a feudal despot. How can you be both of those? You understand? How can you be both of those? It's like both a good man and a bad man. Well, somebody is double-minded. You understand? Somebody is lying about this. You know, he's a reforming monarch on one hand, and then on the next hand, he's a feudal despot. You understand? The feudal despot part is the latter part. That's the part that the Illuminati and conspiratorialists have thrown out there. That's the poison that they've inserted into the memory of the world concerning his imperial magic. That's the lie right there. You understand? And the fortune is the lies. You understand? The lies get further in this kind of a world than the truth is. It is good that you are here to record this picture of me in my palace garden at Addis Ababa. People who see this throughout the world will realize that even in the 20th century, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath. In which a credible what is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. What is at stake is more than one small country. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order, can emerge. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order, What is at stake is more than one small country. ...can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. Thank you.